Welcome to the first episode of Spinning the Black Circle. This is the show where we take a look at some of the greatest albums of all time, or what we think are some of the greatest albums of all time. You may agree, you may disagree. Either way, it's a good topic for discussion and something that we've been wanting to do for a while, to take a look at some lost classics and also some really good records. So here we go. This record right here is panned in the community. It's loved by some and hated by others. <laughs> I'm on the side of, I absolutely love this record, and I think it's one of those records that just gets lost behind some of its earlier, you know, predecessors, things like Danzig 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are held in such high regard, as well as they should be, they're masterpiece absolutely. records, but the later ones do not get anywhere near the amount of love that the early ones do, and it's a real shame because there's some great songs and some great music on some of these records, so we're going to take a look at them both of us being huge fans of just about every era of dancing. <laughs> Couple not so much, but the bulk of it we love to death. So we're going to take a look today on this first episode of Spinning the Black Circle, Danzig 777, Eleusophiri, the seventh studio album from the band, released May 21st, 2002. This record right here, I have always said if it came out just a few years earlier, Absolutely. would have been a lot bigger than it was. It just was a little too late and sometimes that happens yeah in in music you know if you look at some of those bands that came out in the early 90s that were still doing the i guess the hair metal type of stuff those bands were so much better than their predecessors and it just too little too late exactly and this record right here is definitely one of those records that i think had to come out in the late 90s would have been huge but it didn't it was 2002. so this record right here starts off with a track. Now, if you're familiar with um, Glenn Danzig's Black Araya series of, of uh, albums, they're very they're they're hard to describe. Yeah. You know, they're they're not uh, they're instrumental releases, but they're I, I have such a, a difficult time trying to like pinpoint what you would call it. To me, it's it's gothic, not in the way of like you know Sisters of Mercy or Typo Negative or something. It's it, but it's like gothic, like medieval castle where you picture like gargoyles and dragons yeah. and maidens that look yes. like you up in the castle <laughs> that some wizard locked up there or something and there's you know Glenn all Hercules out on a rides up on a horse yeah wearing like a metal no he'd fly a gargoyle in that's true bust through the castle and you know I, something along those be lines a gargoyle and it would be cool <laughs> no matter what it was like he man <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's one of those things where the opening tracks of the albums a lot of times have a similar feel to the Black Araya stuff, and this album right here starts off with a song that would have fit perfectly on Black Araya, and that is, I'm leaving to you to pronounce. Unendlich. Yes. Which in German means never-ending. Yes. So there you go. That's the name of that <laughs> one. I learned a German word today, too. <laughs> and so did I. Um, Great opening track. He did use that live when they did uh, tour behind this record. And, um, you know, again, it's one of those things that just sets you up for the record. I think it's a great introduction piece. Definitely. Uh, great piece of time. music. Yeah, it lets you know, like, you know, what's what's about to come on the record. Great intro. Track two, Black Mass. Um, probably my favorite song on this record. It's such a great song. Yeah, so good. Such a great song. And one of his classic Danzig songs and you know he still plays it live which is I know. great. He uh he played it last time we saw him and Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, really strong song, great yeah. song. I, I love 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 I love the lyrics, the melody, the riff. That is a that is a underrated classic for sure and the perfect opener for this record. He always has those great opening songs on his yes. albums. You know, the ones that just come in and just kill it and Black Mass is definitely one of them. Track three, Wicked Pussycat, the sexual song of the record. Um, Glenn likes to, on a lot of records, he has like that one sexy song, like on Danzig 1, there was She Rides, on Danzig 2, Her Black Wings, even Devil's Plaything. This song is, of course, falling right in line with those songs. And the video, obviously, Yes, featured, no exception. featured his girlfriend at the time. Um, Fujiko yeah. Kano. Yes, with uh, little kitty ears and a kitty tail. Uh, crawling around on the floor, lapping up uh, some milk out of a bowl, you know, typical... Things that would, you would imagine would happen at Glenn's house. <laughs> yes, and uh, there's two edits of that video. There's one that's censored, and there's the uncensored one. 
which features um, a lot of... Uh, Gratuitous nudity. Yes. Or titties. Titties. Lots of them. And just to kind of give you an idea, this is the back of actually a bootleg. But it's a photo from those sessions, which kind of gives you an idea of everything that's going on there. Yeah. Good times at Glenn's house. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it started off around like, uh, you know, Satan's Child, where all of a sudden it, uh, the image kind of became a lot more hypersexual yes. than uh, previously. And it was more like powerful and masculine. This was more sexualized. Yeah. Titties. Lots of them. And so this made no exception. Um, the girl that was featured on a lot of the artwork for this uh, on the inside, the vinyl pressing, which if you want to see the vinyl pressing, we did an episode of Vinyl Graveyard on it. Uh, the CD artwork, the promotional material at the time, uh, was a porn star named Devon, I believe. Devon or Devon. Yeah, something along those not lines. Not sure the pronunciation of that. Yes. It's not a German word, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so if it's not German, forget it. <laughs> um, but that's who is uh, on the cover here getting um, fondled and but you know, manhandled, manhandled by Glenn's Lobster Claw Gloves. Those things are awesome. I need a pair of those. <laughs> what would you do with a pair of those What would I do with those? I'd like go try to get coffee with them. Of course, I'd spill it on myself. That's true. <laughs> Just go up to the drive-thru and like, go and grab the bag with that <laughs> That'd be incredible. I think they'd be great to wear to the movie theater and just like, oh, you know, yeah. over some like shoulder. a really scary movie and just like, and just then just sit back with <laughs> the claws on. What, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> you? Point is, you can go anywhere with those gloves and you're automatically the coolest person in the room. Yes. But Wicked Pussycat, perfect <laughs> song, great, sexy stripper kind of song. Again, there's two versions of the video, both are great. Uh, depends on what your mood is. But uh, I love that track for sure. And uh, definitely an another one that I think is is like a lost, you yeah. know, Danzig classic. That's a great song. I know. I wish he'd do that live. He should. He, you know, great song for sure. He's coming around this summer. Maybe. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Request it. Hold a sign up that says Wicked Pussycat. I, I don't think that's going to go well. It's not? No. It's All right. like, no. I already got the set list. <laughs> Calm down. All right. <laughs> So that's it. Track four, God of Light. Strong song for sure. Great riff. This lineup of the band, you know, you had, you had Glenn, you had Howie Pyro on bass, you had Todd Youth on guitar, Joey Castillo on drums. Solid, solid musical band. Great lineup. Todd Youth is such a great guitar player. Joey's a phenomenal drummer. Um, Howie Pyro's a great bass player. I mean, across the board, it was just such a strong band. And musically, you can hear how powerful this stuff oh, is. Absolutely. That band just brought so much. Solid band. And there's not a lot of material uh, that exists out there in the collector community from this time period. Mm -hmm. It's kind of strange how Glenn, the bulk of the unofficial, unreleased bootleg material or whatever that exists is from his earlier tours when it was a lot harder to smuggle in a, <laughs> a video camera. They were gigantic. Yeah, there's way more shows from those time periods than the later time periods where cameras got smaller and it's kind of weird. But um, there's not a lot that exists, but there's a few things. And uh, so if you're a collector or you really want to try to find some stuff, I'm not telling you to, just saying <laughs> it's out there if you want it. Um, but yeah, God of Light, great song, great riff, another one. Uh, Lieber Skull. Lieber Skull, such a cool group. In yes, that song. yes. Lieber Skull, it's another one of those songs I think that could have been a single. Another strong song, great chorus. I don't know what the lyrics are because for some reason when this was made, they decided to only print the lyrics to eight of the songs. And that's one of the, what, five that uh, there's no lyrics for? There's a few, yeah, and it's... Why is that? I don't know. Glenn's always kind of been mysterious with his lyrics. And I guess, you know, leave a few out to keep you guessing. But great track, uh, Lieber awesome. Skull. I don't know what a Lieber Skull is, but I like it's it. It's German. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dead Inside. This track reminds me of, uh, at least the opening piece reminds me of Alice Cooper's Dead Babies. It's just got that kind of flow to it and that kind of feel. At least that's what I, I gather off of it. undertone. Yeah. And then it just kicks in and... Again, another song, and, and what I do like about this album is that all the songs flow perfectly from one track to the next. Mm -hmm. um, it's There's a big variety of song, but at least every song kind of goes together, and I think this is one of those albums you, you have to listen to in its entirety to really feel it, and that track fits perfectly there. And that leads us to track seven, which is Kiss the Skull, which is what this album was originally titled as in the early... Um,
promotional material that was, you know, passed around. It was Danzig 7, Kiss the Skull. For some reason, he decided to not call it Kiss the Skull and go with uh, a word that's difficult to pronounce, which is kind of his thing. He likes to do that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but Kiss the Skull, they made a video for it, which is... Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very uh, late 90s, early 2000s green screen animation stuff with fire skulls and... It reminds me Everything you of a... that you would have hoped it would be. <laughs> and it's cheesy in a way that it's amazing. And it's such a cool song. And the video, it, it's a cool video. Yeah. It Great. is. Yeah. You and it's such an that. awesome song. It is. It is. Great. You know. It's one of those songs. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I've seen both in the community. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the side that loves it. I, I think it's great. So, if you're on the side that hates it, I don't know why. What's wrong with flaming skulls and and er uh, videos and monster things and stuff? It's good. Skulls fire. Yes, <laughs> it's good stuff. Kiss the skull. I mean, right there. It's kind of got like a Marilyn Manson, beautiful people-ish type of you know type of groove to it, which was you know pretty cool at the time. It's mm -hmm. just got that that thing. I think you know I don't know if he was trying to go for that, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. So that's track seven, Kiss the Skull. And that leads us to E. Luciferi, the title track off of the record. Super strong song, extremely catchy, great hook. Uh, it, if I had to really narrow it down to like top three, that would be my third favorite track on this record. Absolutely. I love that song. It's got such a... I love the intro. I love like... You know, it, it, it almost starts off with this like kind of 70s bluesy... Yeah, it's got a cool blues kind of. Yeah, it's just... It's, it's really... I don't know, it's unique. It starts off with that, but then it goes into this, like, great little, like... Speeds up and yeah, kiss your ass. this <laughs> bouncy little thing that, like, live, you could just tell would have been, like, such a great yeah. live track, and you could just picture everybody just... That you know, moment really... that, like, builds up to just everybody losing their minds. Yeah, such a great, great song. Um, Naked Witch, which is the perfect subject matter for Glenn. Because <laughs> who doesn't love Naked Witches? We all love Naked Witches. Perfect, perfect song for him. That's another one that starts off starts off really heavy, and you think it's going to go in one direction, and then he, you know, pulls it back, drops it off into this really ghostly kind of haunting guitar, mm -hmm. which I don't even know what what Todd Youth is doing there. It's very like, it's really haunting ghostly yeah. guitar, and then the way Glenn sings that, that vocal melody that whispery, over it, very breathy yeah. kind of haunting little voice that he uses there. I love it. Yeah. I well, love when he does that. Great song. Great song. What well, That would have been another one that was a good single. Mm. Um, really strong song. Again, there's there's a lot of songs on here. If you really dig into this record, there's a lot of good material on it. The next track, Angel Blake. Now, that's a song... Um, what was the it's subject matter? It's actually named after the witch in Blood on Satan's Claw. Yeah. It's, it's a very slow, very... Again... It, I don't want to use the term ghostly again because it's not like the it's not like Naked Witch, but it's 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 ballad-ish, but it's still like dark ballad. Yeah. It's not like almost like To Walk the Night was a very dark ballad. Yes, it's, exactly. it's dark in that way. Like it's just got this it's tuned down, but it still has that dark ominous feeling to it. Yeah, that's another one that it just fits perfectly on the record, and that brings us to the coldest sun, which is probably the most goth song on the record. Yeah. It definitely has a goth feel to it, especially vocally when, you know, he's he's almost doing that uh, kind of Ramstein, Rams, yeah. Ramstein, whatever it is. Ramstein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're know. good with your German, you know, that's pretty good. I don't know. It's good stuff. I I'm, could be completely, there's somebody <laughs> in Germany right now going, it's just all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's got that, it just, vocally, he brings that to the table, and it's a very dark, heavy, gothic kind of song. Mm -hmm. Not poppy goth, but like dark goth, you know? Dark. Very gothic type of thing. <laughs> and then uh, the next track, Halo, Goddess Bone. I love that song. That's a cool song. It's got a great melody, great chorus in that song. Super heavy track. That's one thing that this album has going for it, is it's like, start to finish, it is like a heavy, heavy record. Yeah. It's just got this perfect dark overtone over the whole thing. Um, and the final track, with, Without Light I Am, another one, dark, gothic, and it's one of those, it's, it's a great album closer, and, but 
the only thing I will say about that track is for me it just leaves me wanting a little more. Yeah. There just seems to be like the way it ends, the way it you know it, it closes the record. I just feel like there's something missing. So when listening to the record, it gives you it, the record perfectly goes together in my opinion. I think every track flows in a, in a very good sequence. Yeah. And this, it's a solid record from start to finish. I would rank this definitely a lot higher than most people do. A lot of people look at this like it was just a, a whatever record, and I, I totally disagree with it. And I've defended this one and Circle of Snakes with people to death. Um, probably not as much as you, because you're on the you're on the social media side of it a lot more than me. But those who I've spoken to, I definitely defend this record and Circle of Snakes. I think this record is fantastic and definitely one of his best and totally underrated. The only issue I kind of have with this record overall, and it's it's probably because of the fact that Glenn's a perfectionist, is that some of the best material recorded mm. during these sessions was left off of this record. In fact, one of my favorite Danzig songs ever was recorded for this album and left off for some strange reason. As a companion piece to this, you gotta get, I mean, for a million other reasons, but you gotta get the Lost Tracks of Danzig. Mm -hmm. On this is four of the known five tracks, I believe it is, that were recorded uh, during these sessions for this album that were not put on the record, and that is um, Dying Seraph, Soul Eater, Malefical Bride of Hell, which was shown to Malefical, and um, there's a, oh, let's see, Bound by Blood, Who Claims the Solace, all of which were recorded for this record right here and unreleased. And there's one track that was talked about early on in the press, uh, Dark Dark Secret Love? Dark Secret Side. Dark Secret Side. <laughs> Dark, like, yeah. <laughs> That's another record. Dark Secret Side, which was never released and to this day has still never been released. So someday, maybe, if this album gets reissued officially, it can be added on as a bonus track. Or maybe a Lost Tracks of Danzig 2 or some box set. Or give us something. I would love to hear what that sounds like. By a mile, though, I will say that the track Soul Eater is absolutely a beast of a song. Absolutely. Absolutely my top five favorite Danzig, you know, overall the band Danzig songs. Yes. I love that riff, that hook, that melody, the, everything about that song I think is incredible. It's my favorite track on Lost Tracks of Danzig. It's just such a monster song. And the fact that, I think that's... What, what bothers, it's the only thing I can say that bothers me about this record. Is, there's a couple of tracks on here that, had they been taken off of this... And replaced with Soul Eater. Definitely Soul Eater. And, you know, one or two of the other tracks, like Dying Seraph, I think would have fit better on this um, than, you know, a couple of the other tracks. I think had those tracks been put on here and maybe just, you know, put together a little bit better with Soul Eater on it, this record would absolutely be a masterpiece. So... But it didn't happen. But at least we got the Lost Tracks of Danzig, and I do highly recommend picking that up, especially since... Let me see if I have the booklet handy. What's pretty cool about the inside booklet of Lost Tracks of Danzig is he gives you some liner notes about all the different songs on here. And here's the inside page on that. And it talks about some of the tracks that were recorded for Elucifari, but then never released. But it never mentions Soul Eater. It's still a mystery. It's still a mystery. There's no mention of the song in the liner notes. It's just on just the record. It's like it never happens. <laughs> and yet, for me, it's the best track on the entire collection. Why no liner notes, Glenn? Why no mention of this song? It's one of your best songs ever. No mention of it. No nothing. Not even a little blurb, a liner note. The reason why you left off such an incredible song. What the F on that one? I don't know. But at least we got it. It's on Lost Tracks of Dancing. So if you got to pick this up, you got to get that too because it's a perfect companion piece. You get all the leftover stuff and the stuff that wasn't finished. One thing about Lost Tracks of Danzig, I will say though, even though this is not about that, is that material is not throwaway material. Not at all. A lot of people assume that it's a collection of songs that just weren't good enough for the record or the records that those songs came from. That's absolutely not true with that at all. It's just songs that either he didn't finish in time didn't fit the album, didn't, you know, just didn't fit the flow of it. They're all, most of them, are great, great songs. So that's definitely a good companion piece. And the songs left off of Seven should have been on it, and maybe a couple of tracks of this left off, and you could have made a masterpiece record. But you did damn good 
This is a fantastic record. I love this album. What do you think of this record? Leave a comment below. Let us know if this is one of your favorites, and if it's not, why? It's great. It's a great <laughs> Give it record. another listen. Give it another listen. Rediscover this record. Um, hopefully it gets reissued at some point. It's out of print, and it's it's pretty hard to find. You don't find them around now. Yeah. Oh, there's, what, only like 500? There was 500 pressed on vinyl. We did a, a vinyl graveyard on it. There's 500 pressed on vinyl. Uh, the CD is out of print. It was on a label called Spitfire Records, which went out of business. So I don't know who owns the rights to it now. It's out there. It's just really tough to find. Yeah, it's one of the tougher ones. You don't normally see it too often. So, But definitely worth tracking down. Great, solid record, I think, from start to finish. And sorely underrated. It's just one of those things that, for some reason, it just isn't ranked high, and it should be. Check it out. Rediscover this record. Thank you for watching the first episode of Spinning the Black Circle. We will see you next time with another record that we will discuss. And uh, leave a comment below. Click right there on the floating pumpkin to subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Album from Danzig in stores now. Oh.